Hi, I'm Chris Marr of Learning Modular, and in this movie I want to share with you how my malfunctioning module led me down an interesting creative path that allowed me to add more syncopation to my sequences. This is kind of a story in general for beginners of how to treat your modular synthesizer not just as a recreation of your ordinary synth, but as something new to encourage different experimentation or even purposely do the wrong thing with just to see where it takes you creatively. Now, as I mentioned, I happen to have a module, a filter, that was wired a little bit wrong. Its cutoff, for example, was wired backwards. Whenever the control voltage went up, the cutoff for the filter went down. It had some other issues too, like the resonance control was backwards. Well, when I first started using that, after I thought I was losing my mind, I got into about an hour-long session of really creative jamming, trying out things I would never would have tried before just because the control voltage was inverted. One of the ideas that came out of that was a way of making some interesting syncopated sequences, and that in particular is what I want to share now. First, let me explain this basic patch. I'm using my MIDI interface as my master clock source. It's driving my sequencer. And unfortunately, I found out that its pulse was too short to properly trigger my ADSR, a Roland 540. So I'm sending a copy of that clock pulse off to a gate conditioner that's part of the Roland 572 module. It allows me to set a threshold of when the gate triggers, to delay the gate to create further syncopated timings, and most importantly, to set the gate time basically how long the note event is for each step of the sequence. On the pitch side, I'm taking the output of the sequencer into an expert sleeper's disting in a quantizer mode just to clean up my tuning of the notes. That goes into a buffered mult, which I normally use whenever I want to drive something as pitch sensitive like an oscillator. I have one line coming to VCO1 inside the Roland 512. This is a dual VCO, and like most dual VCOs, fortunately it's been normaled so that whatever comes into the first VCO is copied over to the second one if I don't plug something new in over there. So this one cable is driving both oscillators. I'm taking a square wave, tuned all the way down as my bass frequency, and a sawtooth, tuned one octave up, and driving them into a Roland low-pass filter. The output of that filter comes to another molt going off to my tuner, my oscilloscope, and to my audio output. Now, sequences are a mainstay of electronic music, but they can quickly get repetitive and boring. You can try making individual notes more interesting. So just getting a nice tuning there, maybe adding some resonance. Maybe adding some envelope amount just to make the notes enunciated a bit more cleanly. More interesting, but still it can get repetitive and boring rather quickly. Part of my problem is, is that the filter is making the same tone, the same cutoff, the same resonance on every single note, whether or not it's a low note, like steps one and four, for example, or a high note, such as step six. And you can kind of see from the pointers on the dials how low or how high each step is programmed. So one thing I tried to do was take another output from my sequencer and plug it into the control voltage input on the filter. That way the cutoff would follow the same notes that the oscillators were. Okay, that's creating some more motion. That's more interesting. But again, it does not take very long before it gets repetitive and boring again. And I like to keep my listeners engaged with what's going on with the music. Now it so happens that the filter I had had this voltage wired backwards. So that rather than going up every time the pitch of note went up, it did this. To simulate what was wrong with my filter, I'm going to use a control voltage processor from Manhattan Analog. A lot of different people make things that go ahead and offset or invert your voltages. I'll set this to full positive normally. Take it into the input, my control voltage processor, and take its output back into the filter. So initially this should be just like it was before. Good. But the filter that I had actually turned that voltage upside down, which sounded like this. So you notice that on the highest notes, like step six, the filter's cutoff is being driven so low that almost no sound is passing at all, particularly if I take the envelope out.
Just this changing of the filter cutoff, opening up to allow more harmonics through on the low notes, and closing down on the high notes to make them very dull and muted, is adding more interest and more syncopation to the sequence. Let's go ahead and add some envelope back in. Play a little bit with my note duration. Now again, this is what it would sound like with normal patching of a positive voltage going into the filter. Kind of repetitive. And now with that inverted voltage, adding syncopation in different accents. This is the reason you must have something like a CVP or other control voltage processor inside your system, just to try out inverting voltages or offsetting them in different directions, such as taking them down even lower or driving them up higher. In this case, I can even add a little bit of glide or slide in between notes. makes the filter's response a little bit more rounded. Now, of course, you can take this patch further. Now, as I mentioned, the Roland 572 has a gate conditioner where I can play around with things such as the duration of each note. You see how the LED right now is flashing in time with the sequencer? This control also allows me to set the gate duration longer than an individual step from the sequence. When I do that, it's like using a clock divider where only, say, every other note is going to get triggered at the ADSR. But if I lengthen that gate, you'll see it cross over to where now it's triggering the ADSR only on every other note. That little three note trill you're hearing then, doo doo doo. That middle note is being heard because the sequencer is going low, it's being inverted, and driving the cutoff of the filter up and making that note more audible. You could even go to really long divisions and have random notes be triggered. Now you have a real traveling sequence where you have two different type signatures being overlapped of this random sequence from the envelope generator on top of the normal eighth note sequence from the sequencer. So that's why you might want to consider having some sort of clock divider or clock multiplier as part of your modular system as well. To take things off of everything being on the exact same note and instead being triggered at different divisions of the main clock or different tempos altogether. As I mentioned, another issue I had with that particular filter I had is that the resonance was wired backwards. So when I thought I had no resonance, I said I had full resonance. And playing around with the filter in a more unstable setting than I normally would, again, takes me in different creative directions.
So the moral of the story is not to break your modules and wire them backwards, but try things out differently than they are patched in your normal synthesizer you've been playing with. And to facilitate that, get some utility modules, such as control voltage processors, and also some sort of gate processing, or even clock dividers and multipliers. You'll have a lot of fun. Thank you.